7 Common Phrases That Narcissists Use To Justify Their Unacceptable Actions And Maintain Their Control Over You Hello everyone! Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will delve into a deeper understanding of 7 common phrases that narcissists use to justify their unacceptable actions and maintain their control over you. Without further ado, let's dive into the discussion. The initial statement you're likely to encounter from a narcissist is a variant of it's all your fault. So, they acknowledge their mistakes, they confess to yelling, raising their voice, stonewalling you, and even cheating. Yet, they conveniently place the blame on you. This tactic of shifting the blame is exceedingly prevalent when dealing with a narcissist. Narcissists, in particular, exhibit a significant difficulty in accepting the consequences of their actions. They are capable of causing harm, but resist acknowledging their wrongdoing. If you attempt to highlight their mistake, they may resort to lying. And if lying isn't an option, they make it your fault. They are always in need of an escape route, and you become their scapegoat. However, if you've experienced this before, it's crucial that you understand it is not your fault. No matter what the narcissist does, their misconduct is their responsibility, not yours. We all must bear the burden of our actions, and this includes narcissists, even though they persistently refuse to do so. Regardless of their actions, you did not force their hand. Their response to your actions is something they must take responsibility for. Unfortunately, they won't, they can't, but they should. The blame is theirs to bear, not yours. The second common tactic narcissists employ to deflect blame and maintain their control over you is to label you as irrational or perhaps envious. This typically surfaces when narcissists are involved in infidelity. They may argue, naturally, you're going to behave in such a way or make such statements because you're simply irrational and envious. This accusation can even emerge when all you're doing is asking a straightforward question like, why were you unreachable yesterday? not responding to my messages, or what were you doing at your ex's place? These are simple inquiries that a mentally healthy individual, who has nothing to hide, would have no difficulty answering. However, a narcissist, who is concealing something, will twist the scenario, to put you in the hot seat. Their strategy is to put you on the defensive, so they are spared from having to respond to the question. They manipulate the situation, making you feel like you're in the wrong for asking perfectly reasonable questions. This is an insidious method of creating doubt in your mind about your own sanity and perceptions. Narcissists are experts at gaslighting, a form of psychological manipulation where they make you question your own memory, perception, or sanity. This can be incredibly disorienting and damaging, particularly when it's someone you care about or trust who's doing the gaslighting. It's important to remember that your feelings and perceptions are valid, and it's okay to ask questions in a relationship. It's a narcissist's inability to respond in a straightforward and honest way that's the real issue, not your questions or your reactions. The third common phrase that narcissists often resort to is, good luck replacing me. Good luck finding someone else who can tolerate you. Good luck finding someone who earns as much as I do, or someone who is as attractive as I am. When they utter these remarks, their intention is to imply that you are undeserving of them and that they are stooping below their level to be with you. Hence, they wish you luck in finding someone else willing to do the same. If you've ever been on the receiving end of such remarks, I hope your response was, thank goodness. Thank goodness I will not find another like you. Narcissists are often oblivious to their own shortcomings. They fail to recognize their emotionally abusive behavior and how it erodes your self-esteem and sense of self-worth. They refuse to acknowledge or take responsibility for the consequences of their actions. Instead, they maintain a grandiose perception of themselves, which makes them believe that you should be grateful to be with them. So, when they say something along the lines of good luck replacing me or you'll never find someone like me, a fitting response is, thank goodness. If I never encounter anyone like you again, my life will indeed be better. This is because, in reality, their departure from your life creates an opportunity for healing and growth. Narcissists are often blind to their own destructive behavior, and their skewed sense of self-importance may lead them to believe that they are irreplaceable. So, if a narcissist ever tells you, good luck replacing me, 
remember that you deserve better and that there is indeed a better life awaiting you beyond their toxic influence. The fourth phrase you're likely to encounter from a narcissist, particularly during a disagreement or when you're bringing up an issue they need to address, is something along the lines of, what, you again, oh, here we go again. You can almost visualize the eye roll at this point. It's as if they can't be bothered to deal with the same issues that you continually bring up. You find yourself repeating the same issues, because these are genuine problems that an emotionally healthy individual would acknowledge and strive to rectify. But a narcissist doesn't recognize these issues and doesn't make an effort to address them. Consequently, you feel like you're constantly repeating yourself, banging your head against a wall, trying to make the person see what seems so evident and straightforward. However, they won't do it. They can't do it. When you bring up the same issue repeatedly, the problem isn't that you're being redundant. The actual issue is that the same problematic behavior keeps recurring. The narcissist, however, fails to recognize this and doesn't take responsibility for their actions. Instead, they attempt to deflect the blame back onto you by saying things like, oh, here you go again, bringing up old issues. They might even claim, I thought we had settled this already, which can be quite perplexing because you're thinking, well, we did, but then you repeated the same behavior, which is confusing. This is another deflection tactic narcissists use to avoid taking responsibility for their misconduct. If you find yourself questioning your own perceptions, it's a clear sign that they have successfully manipulated you and are maintaining control over you. Narcissists have an uncanny ability to twist situations to their advantage, making others feel like they are the problem. This is an essential part of their manipulation tactics, and understanding this can help you protect yourself from their harmful behavior. Always remember that it's okay to voice your concerns in a relationship, and continuous problematic behavior should not be ignored, regardless of the narcissist's attempts to dismiss or belittle your concerns. The fifth tactic that a narcissist might employ to justify their misbehavior and maintain control over you involves a method known as triangulation. They might utter statements like, I've never encountered this issue with any other boyfriend or girlfriend, or I don't have this issue with your brother or sister, or none of my other friends have this problem. Grasping the implications of this tactic can be somewhat complex because you might have expressed similar sentiments to the narcissist, recognizing that this relationship is unlike any other you've been in. However, when such a comment comes from someone who is emotionally abusive, it is highly likely to be a falsehood. We know that such individuals are remarkably predictable. Therefore, the way they behave in your relationship is likely a reflection of their conduct in past relationships or their interactions with others. Even if this isn't the case, they are still likely causing distress or perpetuating abuse in some form to the other person. This holds true even when discussing a narcissistic parent who favors one child over the others, the golden child. Such a relationship is not necessarily healthy as there is always some level of abuse involved. The narcissist might say, well, I don't have this issue with the other person, I never had this problem with my most recent ex, they imply that the issue is exclusive to you. But be clear about this, it is triangulation. They are attempting to create a hierarchy where you are not at the top. The person they are comparing you to is positioned at the top, while you are relegated to the bottom. Triangulation is a manipulative strategy used by narcissists to control and diminish the self-esteem of their victims. By comparing you unfavorably to others, they aim to make you feel inferior and more dependent on their approval. This tactic can be deeply damaging to your self-esteem and sense of self-worth, but recognizing it for what it is can be the first step toward reclaiming your power and breaking free from the narcissist's control. Always remember that you are unique and valuable and no one has the right to compare you to others or make you feel less than. The sixth statement you're likely to hear from a narcissist attempting to justify their undesirable behavior is something along the lines of, you're blowing things out of proportion. You always do this. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. While it's true that people can sometimes overreact or dramatize minor issues, when you're dealing with an emotionally abusive person like a narcissist, you're often discussing a significant matter. For instance, perhaps the narcissist is cheating, or they have been dishonest about financial matters. These are significant issues that need to be addressed in any relationship. 
However, the narcissist attempts to minimize your concerns, implying that you're overreacting and that the issue isn't as serious as you're making it out to be. They may even accuse you of instigating arguments or picking fights, suggesting that if it wasn't this issue, it would be something else. If you're not a narcissist, these accusations can be disconcerting because you realize that you do have numerous issues with this person, but the reason you have so many problems with them is that there are indeed many issues in your relationship with someone incapable of self-reflection. As a result, any problems you have are likely to be persistent and recurring. Furthermore, you're in a relationship with someone who lacks emotional empathy, meaning they have no qualms about hurting you. As such, issues may arise frequently, possibly on a daily basis. So, when the narcissist shifts the blame back onto you, you might start second-guessing yourself, thinking, maybe it is me, maybe I should let things slide. And how convenient is that for the narcissist? You suspect they're cheating, but you're hesitant to bring it up due to their criticism of your supposed overreactions. So, you hold back, you let it slide. This is one of the ways a narcissist maintains control over you. The final statement on the list, frequently used by narcissists, is, your actions are hurting these other people. When a narcissist senses that their control over you is waning and you're starting to free yourself from their manipulative grip, they might resort to invoking guilt by involving others. For instance, suppose you've limited your contact with the narcissist in your life to a bare minimum, adopting a gray rock approach where you maintain a neutral, unresponsive demeanor around them. As a result, you might have had to distance yourself from a few people in your life as well, such as the narcissist's family, mutual friends, or even some of your own family members. These can be tough decisions to make, but if you've identified that these individuals are flying monkeys, people who act as informants for the narcissist, reporting back to them about your life, you've likely made the right decision. However, the narcissist may exploit this to induce guilt, often bringing up how your actions have supposedly hurt others. They might say, so-and-so is devastated, or I can't believe you cut off this person. That's so cold-hearted. They are likely to play on your emotions towards those who aren't narcissists, because it's more likely to have an impact. Once you've identified someone as a narcissist and understand what you need to do, you are prepared to take the necessary steps, no matter how difficult. But when it comes to other people, the narcissist knows they can potentially exploit your feelings. Their objective in making you feel guilty is to regain control over you. If you allow these flying monkeys back into your life, the narcissist gets a window into your world, gaining more information about you and establishing a pathway to reach you. These individuals may share information about the narcissist with you and relay any information they gather from you back to the narcissist thereby reopening a channel that you had deliberately closed. It's just another ploy to regain control over you. Rest assured that the narcissist is not genuinely concerned about anyone else's feelings. They don't truly care if someone else is hurt, they only mention it to manipulate you. That brings us to the end of our discussion today. We hope that these insights into the manipulative tactics of narcissists will empower you to stand up for yourself and maintain healthier relationships. Remember, it's crucial to prioritize your own well-being and not let anyone undermine your self-worth. If you found this information helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more enlightening content. Always remember, you are strong, you are valuable, and you deserve respect. Thank you for watching, and take care until next time.